On today's show, we talk about last night's baseball game against Tulane. And give you our take on tonight's NFL draft. So get on the edge of your seat and put on your rally caps because it's the bottom of the ninth and it starts right now. Welcome to Sports Showtime's Bottom of the Ninth. I'm Alex Cheney. And I'm Patrick Clay. Thanks for tuning in. Well, Alex, it's Thursday, finally. Any big plans for the weekend? Uh, studying, actually. Studying. So that's really exciting. I have a dead week coming up. I still have a test. You know, I got the social, uh, social media, the student media grind, and I'm still a student, so I you get to look forward to that. Absolutely. You know, it might be dead week for the rest of LSU, but we are still here to bring still you your here. news next We're week. Here for you. We LSU, America, you're welcome. <laughs> we're, on, we're on your team. Tulane uh, challenged LSU this Wednesday night at the box. LSU started slow, having only two hits, both by Rafe Rhymes. At the bottom of the fifth inning, catcher Ty Ross hit teammate Rhymes in for an RBI ground out. At the top of the sixth, Tulane answered back with a two-run double. But finally, at the bottom, with the innings, with the bases loaded, Tulane threw a wild pitch, which advanced all the runners. Later that inning, Rhymes had a two-RBI single, increasing the score four to two. In the eighth, Tulane added yet another run, but the Tigers held them at that spot. Here's what Ray Rimes had to say. Coach said, you know, he thinks that, you know, I might have lost some, some of the aggressiveness I had last year, so I was just coming out swinging. The Tigers will host South Carolina this weekend. Game one of the series starts Friday at 7. How about the Milwaukee baseball? I mean, they kind of scared me last night. I was at Rotolo's devouring my $5 calzone, and the whole time I can't really enjoy it because I was like, all right, guys, we got to win. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was tricky considering the last time <clears throat> LSU baseball played Tulane. Oh, yeah. The mercy rule. It, it, yeah, at Tulane. So you figured, oh, we're coming home against Tulane. This should sure. be like a 20 run. Not to mention it's like at least a 20 game win streak in, uh, against the Louisiana teams. Mm -hmm. I think they're undefeated this season in midweek games. Wanted to keep that up, and they did. Absolutely. How about that? Coming up, me and Patrick do our best Mel Kiefer and Todd McShan impression and give you our top five picks for tonight's NFL draft. I'm not sure if you have Mel's hair, but we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Well, if you're a sports fan, which I hope you are, you're watching our show, and have watched ESPN at any time, anytime. literally at all, ever, <laughs> this week, you know that tonight is the NFL Draft. Tonight's the night when 20-somethings get heralded as the next great ingredient to an NFL franchise. They also make more money on their first contract than I probably will in my entire life. Make that two of us. Bearing that in mind, let's compare our list of the top five money makers in tonight's draft. So, for our mock top five here at bottom of the ninth, one and two, I have offensive tackle Eric Fisher out of Central Michigan going one, mm -hmm. and Texas A&M offensive lineman Luke Jokel going number two, which is opposite of my compadre, Alex's. All right, I have Luke going first, Eric going second. Patrick, why is Eric Fisher your number one guy? Eric Fisher's going number one just because of his a broad skill set. He's got a wide range protecting the edge. He can mirror quick ends around the pocket, which is huge for protecting the quarterback. He can just be that anchor on your offensive line. He's patient. He quickly recognizes line movement. And I personally think he has more of an upside than Jokel. You can plug him in immediately and get results. I mean, my main reason for liking Lou Jokel, very simple, three letters, SEC. Every week he's going against a top talent in the country and excelling. I mean, he was the starting left tackle for Johnny Manziel's Heisman campaign, ran all over the field, passed all over the field, great footwork, strong, fast guy. I, I think he can lead Alex Smith. I just, really, he can help him out. He just didn't do it against LSU. <laughs> Moving right along, let's take a look at our third picks. At number three, I see the Oakland Raiders going with D-tackle star Lutalele out of Utah. Lele. And I have Sharif Floyd out of Florida going third. Alex, we both have D tackles going to Oakland. Clearly, there's a pattern here. Why Floyd? Well, uh, Richard Seymour left the Raiders, and that leaves him with a really big hole in the middle. Shreve Floyd, you want to have D tackle, nose tackle. I mean, depending on where the Raiders go with the 4 3 or the 3 4. And he is fast. Not only is he fast, he's big, he's strong. He can just bust through any line, and he played in the SEC, so he really knows what he's doing. You did mention free agents leaving 
Ra the Oakland Raiders, and that's absolutely true. They lost all of their starting defensive tackles, which is why I think they go with Lutalele. He's a bit of a stretch, but he's agile. He's a solid anchor. He can stonewall double teams, and for how big he is, he moves laterally pretty well. They're taking a chance on this guy, but I think it's a risk they're willing to take. I mean, the main thing to pay attention with Stars, he does have that lingering uh, medical condition, mm -hmm. which could, you know, prove to lower his durability as his career goes on. It could. It's something to keep an eye on. Coming up, our fourth pick. We're in uh, complete agreement. Well, uh, what else Patrick is and I are both taking Oregon outside linebacker Deion Jordan for the Eagles. You just can't think that Chip Kelly is going to pass up one of his own from Oregon in his first year at Philadelphia. I mean, he just brought back Dennis Dixon to be the quarterback, I mean, former, former Oregon guy. Exactly. It, uh, Jordan's a guy that's very agile. He's very fast. He fit in that Oregon defense well, and he's going to fit into what Chip wants to bring to Philadelphia quite well. Oh, yeah. Very, I mean, numbers are off the charts. He's going to be a great player. Absolutely. On to the fifth pick, I have Ezekiel Ansa. Ziggy. <laughs> going to the Lions, and you have... I got Lane Johnson, tackle of Oklahoma, heading to Motown. You got a third tackle going in the top five. I do. You know, offensive line is just a really big need this year, and I think Lane Johnson can really help a uh, Detroit Lions offense that has lacked pass protection the past few years, and Matt Stafford has been injured so often, and now this team, this offense is almost ready. Less they need is a tackle. They have the receivers, Reggie Bush, Stafford. They just need a good line, and they'll be ready to go. You said that they're almost ready on offense. That's very true. I think they could address those finishing needs in free agency. You, even the year they made the playoffs two years ago, what were they missing? Defense. And that's exactly what Ziggy would bring. He was very versatile. He played DN, D-tackle, nose tackle, outside linebacker, everything. And the Lions need that versatility, and they could balance out the offense, making it a potential playoff contender. Absolutely, but, you know, if I'm going to go defense with the Lions, I can look in the secondary. I mean, they get torched every year, especially, like, Matt Flynn. Right. Wow, that was incredible. Anyway, with that said, let's take a look at our top five draft picks. So here we have them listed, and, uh, you know, this, this is going to be interesting to see how it plays out tonight. We, got, we definitely have a different lineup. A good thing I have a OLD, uh, Deion Jordan. OLD, how about that? <laughs> classic, classic typos. <laughs> But, hey. alas, America, you know what we're going for. <laughs> I mean, you understand. So, yeah, definitely be looking out for that tonight when we join up and watch the draft, and we'll let you know how we Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Coming up after the break, something smells a little fishy in the newsroom. What could it be? It's a whale of a story. We'll be right back. <laughs> And welcome back to the show. Normally on the bottom of the ninth, we're generally well-rounded with our coverage. You know, <laughs> We'll give you some football, basketball, baseball. Well. Yeah, those are all that really matter. <laughs> but we couldn't pass up a chance to show you this story. A 19-year-old from Houston yep. made the catch of a lifetime during his Make-A-Wish Foundation trip to Hawaii. K-H-N-L, Lisa Kubot Ku Kubo Kubota? You'll That's get a story. You'll get it, buddy. <laughs> We just call it a blind strike, just out of nowhere. And just, uh, we thought it was a tuna first. It really did. 15 miles off Kewalo Basin, Sterling Ellis's deep sea fishing adventure took off. I was reeling it, and I saw like the big black fin, and then it just started going in the opposite direction, taking all my line. But the 11 foot long, 759 pound marlin didn't give up without a fight. Yeah, my arm hurt a little bit. And he's like, I just keep reeling. I'm like, I don't think I can. Like, not that it's like pressure on me, but it's just like my arm is like locked up and I can't really reel. The crew on the Wild Bunch helped him with a huge haul. In the end, it took more than an hour to reel in the massive marlin. He was a little tired, and that was half the, half the battle was bringing it back in the boat. And we're in a few boats that don't have a transom door, but we do have a, a gym pole to get them in. And it uh, took all my deckhand and myself and uh, two kids that are not that big as, and, uh, to get it in the boat. You know, as great as that story was, it's definitely starting to smell a little fishy around here. Definitely a little set. bit. Did that really have a poipus on our show? A poipus. I don't know. I mean, the, the, it seemed like the point was just kind of flailing around the central. Really? Just look at big old Gyarados on the screen. Gyarados was my favorite Pokemon. I don't know what you're talking about. That guy was a dragon with, like, gills, and he would just... Wait, this is a sports show. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Childhood fantasies. Well, that's our show. Thanks for tuning in to Sports Showtime on Tiger TV. You can catch the highlights and watch full episodes online at TigerTV.tv. Also, make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for all the latest news. And while you're there, be sure to check out live updates from New York as our very own Grant Yenny will post the latest from the NFL draft. Here you see he's already in the building and ready to go, seeing where the LSU Tigers go in these first couple of rounds. I'm really jealous. I think first one off the board is going to be uh, Mingo. Mingo, going absolutely. Probably New Orleans? 
No, Probably to the Jets. I don't know. If he lasts till 15, there's no way he's getting past Rob Also, uh, Ryan. Uh, point of information, if you want to be at the desk like me and Patrick, come audition right here in Hodges Hall at 2.30. That's p.m., folks. Tomorrow, right here in the studio until 4.30, also in the p.m. We'll come take a look, and uh, if you like what you see, come do it. It's fun. We're making a new fit name for ourselves, and so can you. Going from Tiger TV to WLSU, you don't want to miss out on being a part of this opportunity. And also, uh, it's the last sports show ever under the Tiger TV name, so that's very excited. Next week. Next week, same time, same place. For Patrick Clay, I'm Alex Cheney. As always, enjoy your weekend, and you stay classy, Baton Rouge. Ding! <laughs>